All righty. Welcome back to another episode of Two Plane Sports. Today is Monday, November 7th, a special recruiting talk video that we are uh, we felt like we needed to release. It was going to be too long of a video to release on Sunday. So we decided to break it up into two parts and talk about who visited for the OU Baylor game uh, and what we think about the a new offer went out. Um, some some big time recruits showed up on campus 2023, 24, 25 guys. Uh, we're going to be mainly focusing on who is there for 2023, who is there for 2024, and 2025. We'll be talking about that, but I think 2025 will be more on our radar after this National Signing Day, and we can kind of move on. It's just 2025 is so far away, so we're going to be mainly 23 and 24 kids. Um, but before we get into it, I just want to say we appreciate it. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, turn the notification bell on, and remember, even if you are subscribed, when you like and comment on this video, it helps our channel out out tremendously so be sure to do that if you're new here hit the subscribe button um and follow us on twitter instagram facebook apple and spotify everything's linked in the description below so we'll get into it i don't need a five minute intro like sometimes that i've done um so 2023 guys jackson arnold was there caleb hicks jacoby johnson josh bates normal suspects that you expect to be there a lot of the leaders of this of this class you know jackson arnold and joshua bates were there i think bedlam's going to be a pretty good visit weekend what do you think it's supposed to be a huge visit weekend and everyone's favorite name david hicks is supposed to be there so uh that that'll just add to that much more pressure but it's supposed to be big regardless of david hicks being there or not yeah true um so we'll talk about, we talked about earlier this past week um, as a graduate transfer who visited Jacob Lacey. Uh, he was a four-star in the 20, 2019 class. Uh, he still has one more year of eligibility. Um, he was a four-star. Clemson was a runner-up. Brent Venables obviously recruited him. Very familiar. Seems like this could be a, an Oklahoma-Kentucky kind of battle considering he's from Bowling Green, Kentucky. Um, we talked about him a lot, but Obviously, he should be able to see that he is desperately needed at Oklahoma after this performance. Uh, we need a bigger, def- you know, we need more bodies, big, big time bodies, you know, being almost 300 pounds. I don't know how the visit really went, but I'd like to think that Oklahoma is able to show him, hey, we need you. Yeah, it seems like the visit went uh, pretty well. Um, I think his dad posted about, you know, how how much fun they had on Friday, the day before the game. Um, so yeah, hopefully what he saw in the field was, and it, I don't, yeah, the result definitely helps. Um, but I don't think that especially a transfer so much looks at the result sometimes as to the position he will be put in, uh, with the scheme, uh, the position he might play. So definitely talking to Bates, um, and like what he, the vision he sees for him in this defense in Oklahoma. So Hopefully the right things were said in those conversations when he did get the opportunity opportunities to talk to Bates and Venables about where he could fit into this defense so that he sees, he kind of pictured himself where he would be playing uh, during the game. True. I mean, they're looking for one year or two years to be able to be developed and get him over the hump and get into the NFL. And that's at the end of the day, what a lot of these graduate guys are looking for is that final development that maybe bumped him up from a round four kind of guy to a round two and see if you can't get up there and and be a big time pick in the NFL, which, so I don't blame him. I would do the same thing. Um, so that's kind of the 23 talk and the graduate transfer visit. Now the main part of this video is 2024. Um, there was a new offer that went out uh, yesterday, or I guess a couple of days ago is Blake Frazier. Uh, Blake Frazier is a 2024 four-star offensive tackle, 6'5", 260 from Austin, Texas. Um, OU ended up offering him on his visit. He ended up tweeting out his his official offer uh, before a before the game, a pregame uh, talk that he had with Coach Venables. Uh, they offered Blake Frazier. Oklahoma's going into Longhorn country and is not, not afraid, obviously. Um, currently, Frazier holds offers from Baylor, Clemson, Michigan, Stanford, AM, uh, UTSA, a handful of other smaller schools, TCU, Houston. So he's got a handful of schools that are coming in and offering him. Obviously, he's 260 pounds, according to 247. 
but he is class of 24. So he is just finishing up his junior football season. He's got some time. Obviously he's being offered on the idea of him getting up to that 300 pound mark with that six, five frame. Uh, do you have any thoughts on Frazier or anything like that? His dad did play offensive line at university of Michigan. I feel like Michigan will be a, um, probably a player in his recruitment. I'd imagine if your dad plays somewhere, I would think you at least consider that school. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The, the Michigan stuff definitely going to be a competitor for his commitment as we get through his cycle. Um, definitely exciting. Uh, I don't understand where they see him playing. I know that we have Anton leave more than likely leaving and Wanya or Wanya Morris leaving at the end of the year, but we did just get, three tackles in this 23 class three tackles in this 23 class and could get a couple more in the transfer portal already have uh jake sexton and jake taylor on campus so i don't know how many more tackles we can possibly get um maybe they're not exactly trying to get him to to stay at a lighter weight maybe they do want him to get heavier and play guard uh, but we'll see i think there's just going to be a lot of shifting and a lot of players right now coming out of high school uh, designate as a tackle so that they can get a little bit more looks because you don't really see interior linemen at any level getting too much attention. And it could be the fact that this recruiting philosophy is different than the previous staff where we're going to pile in the the talent and, you know, we're going to throw everyone in there and let them compete for the spots. And if kids end up transferring or kids end up leaving, so be it, we'll go replace them and just keep going and let the best player um, win the starting role. So uh, Frazier's recruitment seems to start, it seems to be starting to heat up some. He's been picking up an offer. He picked up an offer from Clemson the end of last month. Uh, so he's starting to get going, same with Stanford. Um, so I expect him to pick up more offers as this recruiting cycle ends for 2023, and he will probably become more of a priority target for other programs as well. Um, another visitor was Casey Poe. We've talked about Casey Poe a few times over the last three or four months. Um, he's from Lindale, Texas. He's an interior offensive lineman, 6'5", 280, so a little bit bigger, 2024 four-star uh, interior lineman. So he's got the similar size as Frazier does, um, but he's been offered by Oklahoma since June. So uh, he's been on Oklahoma's radar for a while, and Obviously, there's some mutual interest. He's coming up for a visit unofficially. And, um, you know, a lot of these kids that did come up probably had games on a Friday night and made the drive up or some had Thursday night games, obviously. Um, but he both Frazier and Casey both do shot put. Uh, Casey won Texas 4A state shot put as a sophomore. Um, they're both versatile athletes. Uh, he played left guard. OU needs interior offensive lineman. Honestly, the more offensive lineman, the bigger. That's the whole point of two planes. You need a bunch of big guys. Uh, what do you think about Casey? I like where Oklahoma sits with him. Yeah. Uh, it'll be, again, interesting to see how we recruit the in the line situation, the offensive line situation for the next couple of years because we have had so much turnover there um, that we'll need to stock up. But again, I, I, I definitely think that uh, Casey's going to be an interior in college because of the size he already has. 280 as a junior in high school is impressive. Um, getting him to gain and he'll more than likely gain some more weight between now and the end of his senior year. <clears throat> so to me, it seems inevitable that he'll be in the interior of the line, more than likely a guard. Um, but again, with the amount of tackles that we're recruiting and have on campus already, how long will it be until one of them gets asked to start gaining weight to get move into the guard position? I mean, we have Bates, you know, he's supposed to be the center because he's the smaller of the offensive linemen that we have committed. Like, how, you know, it'll be interesting to see how they all shift because it's tough for offensive linemen sometimes to come in and be just get plugged into their position that they played in high school. And for the most part, offensive linemen at the high school level do get shifted around a ton until the coach says, all right, this is where we need you. And this is where you're going to stay for your senior year. 
there, there is going to be a lot of moving and shifting of these guys. I do think that um, they're probably offering these kids and recruiting them saying that we'll, we'll recruit you for primarily either interior, or, you know, outside, but you've got to be willing to kind of shift and, and adapt as depth and opportunities are. And if you're willing to do that, you might be able to play sooner, maybe a year or two earlier than, than you would have if you would have just wanted to be a tackle or, an, you know, a guard, one of the two. So um, I like where Oklahoma sits. And again, as we're going through these 24 kids, I'm not expecting a commitment really outside, you know, for these kids right away. There is a guy that I do think that there could be a commitment coming down the pipeline here pretty soon. Uh, that'll be actually the last guy we're going to be talking about. Um, but the next guy I want to talk about here is Caden Durham. Uh, Caden Durham, five foot nine, 180 pound running back from Duncanville, Texas, which Oklahoma is starting to recruit Duncanville and going after a lot of the, the recruits out of Duncanville. Uh, he's a 2024 four star running back. Um, he's got offers. He got offered by Oklahoma in July. Um, OU's been recruiting him. And Alabama's offered him, um, Arizona State, LSU, Mississippi State, Michigan State, TCU, SMU. He's picking up quite a few offers. Um, he's a smaller running back, you know, at 5'9", 180. But again, he's just in his junior season and might be adjusted at this point. Um, but a smaller guy, he's extremely fast. Um, it gives me a little bit of, of a feel of maybe like a Deuce Vaughn. Uh, he runs track. Um, he, he runs it at a high level too. Uh, he, I mean, he was competing at the AAU junior Olympics in August of uh, this year. Um, he's, he's extremely quick and that's what OU needs is le- like just athletes. What do you think? Yeah. The, the speed is what is the most appealing part of his game outside of him being in Duncanville, because there are some big time players at that school right now that Oklahoma does have, uh, offers out to the one that sticks out mainly is Colin Simmons, I believe his last name is. Um, he, big-time defensive lineman that Oklahoma has been recruiting for a while now. Caden would be a great addition to the running back room. The speed that he has um, would be cool to have him in, like, a two-running back situation, if that's something Lubby ever wants to implement with him and, like, Javante Barnes, or if they want two speedsters out there, um, Gavin and Caden. I mean, there's a lot of situations where you can see him. I do like the comparison of Deuce Vaughn, um, and maybe he can be a Deuce Vaughn for Oklahoma because, as we all know, Deuce Vaughn is a pain in the ass to play against because he is so small and explosive. So it would be nice to have one of those guys on the team rather than having to play against them for three or four years. For sure. And also, I will mention that Caden, um, both his parents went to OU. Uh, he was originally from Moore. Uh, he now lives obviously in Texas. There are a bunch of ties to Oklahoma here. Um, o- I mean, I think this is going to come down to OU and Alabama and any other big time program that comes in and like an Ohio state, if they came in and started recruiting him. But as of right now, it seems like being that um, Alabama's offered Oklahoma's offered. I think they offered like within a week of each other. Um, but OU's got the parents that it went to OU. He lived in more, They've got some ties here, and I like where OU sits. Came up, you know, for a visit himself. Obviously, that's a good look. I wouldn't expect a commitment anytime soon, but OU is going to be in a very good spot for the 2024 running back group. I mean, Taylor Tatum, Stacey Gage, there's there's other guys that didn't come up this weekend, but OU is going to be in a really good spot for the 2024 running back situation with DeMarco Murray. Um Another guy that came up this past weekend is from is BJ Kennedy. I think does he say it? Kennedy, a six foot five, two hundred and forty pound athlete from Topeka, Kansas. OU seems to really be ratcheting up their recruitment of the state of Kansas ever since Brent Venables has shown up. Uh, obviously, he is highly regarded in the state of Kansas for high school football. Um, Kennedy is a twenty twenty four. Three-star composite, 2024, four-star, according to only 247, but at 6'5", 240 pounds, um, he provides a lot of versatility. Obviously, he's been recruited as an athlete, um, intriguing guy. Um, OU hasn't offered to date yet with him, um, and they're probably still evaluating him. Um, Obviously, he has interest in Oklahoma, and Oklahoma has interest in him. Um, I think they're just trying to figure out where could he play? What do you think? Yeah, the 
the fact he didn't leave with an offer, I think is where my red flag kind of comes up. I don't know if Oklahoma is going to recruit him too hard right now because we are super early in the 24 cycle that it was more of a let's get to know each other situation. And maybe here in a few months, we'll offer you once we have a better idea of where the 24, where we stand in the 24 class, where you could fit in for this team. Um, because like you said, being an athlete, he is clearly a very versatile player. So they want to make sure that they're putting him in a good situation and having the team in a good situation overall in the recruiting cycle for 2024. And I, I do agree. I think there is some hesitancy because they probably feel good about where they're at with other guys. Um, but nothing wrong with touching base and starting that relationship early. And I'm sure some kids understand that you've got offers. You can only offer so many people in so many spots until things people start making decisions. So um, I do think that the state of Kansas will become very, very positive for Oklahoma, obviously with Jaron Cannon committing, but I think down the road, Kansas is going to become a great pipeline for Oklahoma to get talent. Um, and the last 24 kid that I want to talk about and probably the most important component of the 24 class is Michael Hawkins. He was there, um, six foot one, 185 pound quarterback from Allen, Texas, 2024 four-star quarterback. He's a top 15 quarterback in the country and his class. I do think he has room to move up. Um, obviously a couple of weeks ago, Geyer played Allen, Texas and Denton Geyer blew them out of the water, but Hawkins looked pretty solid in that game. It's just, I think the talent level of Denton Geyer is significant. And I mean, you look at the back end of their defense, they've got three power five prospects back there that are playing defensive back that you're basically going against division one, uh, a division one college football program, a top college program back there. Uh, so I think there were some limitations there, but Hawkins came up for a visit. Obviously, his dad played at Oklahoma. He picked up a crystal ball from Brandon Drum in favor of Oklahoma after the visit or during the visit. You'd like to think that Oklahoma's in a pretty darn good spot for him. What do you think? Yeah, I agree. The crystal ball <clears throat> um, is probably the biggest indicator because we saw one earlier in the year from Parker Thune very early um like he does it, it it's a parker thing to do and now we see one from brandon drum both at very high confidence levels i think oklahoma sits in a very good spot i know arkansas is the other main competitor i just for a quarterback looking at the play that both schools are putting out kj jefferson doesn't look amazing uh as re with being a passer and even with Dylan Gabriel having some struggles, he still looks better than what KJ's done so far this season. So um, wouldn't be surprised if he is potentially the first commit in the 2024 class or one of the first. Um, hopefully we hear from that maybe like in the next month or so. I know a lot of kids like to wait until their high school season is over um, to put a little bit more thought into these um, decisions or uh, maybe wait till like uh, some sort of big game uh, sometime in January. We'll see, but I like where, where we definitely like where we sit with Hawkins. Um, like you said, the fact that he's a legacy probably helps a lot, probably raised as an Oklahoma fan. So um, going to be, it's going to be big, not just for him in the 24 class, but 25 class, he's got a teammate. That, and I know we're not going to talk about the 25 class too much today, but his teammate, the tight end, I think having him is going to put us in a very good position to get him uh, to commit in a couple of years. Yeah. And you bring up a good point. And I, I like you said, we, we weren't going to talk a whole lot about 2025, but he's the one guy I wanted to talk about. I know that these are early rankings, obviously 25, but he's a five-star according to the two, four, seven. That is Devon Mitchell. Um, he came up for his fourth visit, fourth time to see them this season um, with Hawkins obviously they're their teammates and their buddies you would like to think that where Hawkins has to go has a little bit of an influence on Devon Mitchell um the number one tight end in the class of five-star tight end Joe John Finley's recruiting him and you got to feel good about that um so I'd like to see Hawkins join this class hopefully right in January kind of the same time frame as Jackson Arnold did uh once the early national signing day is done um, hopefully he can jump on board by January, start the recruiting of the 24 class as Oklahoma turns the page 
um, and also recruits his teammate Devon Mitchell for the 25 class. Obviously, Mitchell's probably a year away before he'd even pull the trigger and commit to someone, uh, but it's always good to get a guy up multiple times uh, in one season. So, but I think that's all I've got as far as who showed up. I'm sure there's more, but those are kind of the high hitting prospects and high hitting uh, guys that I felt like we needed to talk about. Were there any ones that any guys that you thought we needed to mention or are you good? Devon Mitchell was the one that I think was the biggest highlight for me outside of Hawkins because they are teammates, but <clears throat> hopefully this, I mean, who knows? Maybe uh, Venables will let him commit hell early. Wouldn't that be something? That'd be, that'd be a shocker, but um, we'll see. We're going to keep an eye on it. Um, there's a lot of moving parts now that we're in November uh, going into December, National Signing Days, early National Signing Days, not very far away at this point. Oklahoma, hopefully Oklahoma ends up winning two out of three games, three out of three, finish strong, um, and, and put a good impression on these kids. So um, Jackson Arnold was there recruiting these kids, and hopefully um, Bedlam's even a bigger weekend for recruiting-wise. It should be, in theory. Uh, hopefully Vosick, David Hicks, and maybe more of these kids show up for uh, some unofficial visits so we'll we'll be keeping an eye on that um do you have an individual challenge for people not today we're we're gonna, we're gonna save an individual for for the next one all right work works for me uh you made it this far we really appreciate it hit the subscribe button turn the notif notification bell on like the video and follow us on twitter instagram facebook apple and spotify i think our recruiting videos are going to really start picking up uh, as as we get through November, there's going to be a lot of information coming out. So be sure to subscribe to the channel and like the video and let us know what you think. Let's catch you guys Wednesday.